I have a 2014 Ram Promaster 2500 and it's the 136 inch wheelbase. I got this van because I had previously had a minivan that I was road tripping in and I really wanted a setup where I could stand up and cook inside and have my own space to hang out. The van itself was around $21,000. Um, the interior, so this is just my, actually I just have my rope mat here so that you can take off your shoes and not get the inside dirty. This is my kitchen. I have like a nice butcher's block countertop here that I really like. And my stove, um, which is actually just a normal camp stove that anyone would get for a road trip. And actually, it's attached to the counter with these little um, hitches here, but you can actually untie this cord. So if I wanted to, I could take it outside to cook, but then when I'm driving, it doesn't move around, which is nice because you have both options. And then I have food storage in here. These bins can slide out and I have like snacks, breakfast stuff, uh, dinner, like rice, vegetables, that kind of thing, and dishes and I have my seven gallon water tank here. I actually don't have a sink right now, but I'd really like to add one in the future, but for now, just having the water tank works okay. for me. And I have my little trash can, and then there's my one gallon propane tank behind there, which is hooked up to the stove. So these stay in because we put this strip of plywood here as the trim piece, and then if it slides forward, it just hits that so it doesn't come out. So for the lights, a lot of people do recess lighting um, up here on the ceiling, which looks really nice, but it's a lot of work and I didn't want to do all that work. So my friend and I actually came up with this idea where you use these LED light strips that are really cheap. And if you put them under your trim piece like this, then it looks really nice. Like it's not too harsh of a light because it reflects off the wall. And uh, it was like, really not a lot of work at all, like maybe an hour or two, and I think it looks really good, so I'm really happy with it. This, These lights on Amazon are like $4 for a 16-foot strip or something like that, so they're really cheap, and then you have to buy the power supply and the cables and stuff. It's like maybe 20 or $30 for the whole thing, so it's really inexpensive. So the bed is a 5-inch thick memory foam mattress that's really comfortable. Um, we had to cut it a little bit because the van um, from wall to wall is only 5 foot 11, but I'm 5 foot 8, so it works for me um, to have the bed width-wise like this. And um, yeah, I have like my comforter, which is really warm and nice, and pillows, and I have some storage under here, which is kind of just random stuff right now, like books. Uh, this is like pretty random stuff, and then I have my battery here for the solar and then underneath I have like these bins for my clothes and then I keep like kind of utility stuff like soap, uh, laundry detergent and hand sanitizer and that kind of thing in this one. So for these storage bins here they're just kept in because the flooring here comes up to the edge of the bed platform and then if you slide it out you're using the actual edge of the flooring as the lip so when you drive, this is not gonna, it might slide forward like that, but it's not gonna slide out and like hit the side of the van or something like that. Uh, I actually got it from a video from Nate um, that he did for his own van build out. And actually we use that video a lot as a reference when we were building out the van. We would like, for certain parts, we would like play the video and like, okay, pause it there. Let's see what he did there. <laughs> so we can figure it out. <laughs> Battery is a system made by Goal Zero um, that's really easy to install. I know that a lot of people who do van build outs uh, kind of don't like the Goal Zeros because they're expensive um, and you can do like a DIY solar where you're buying your own battery and solar charge controller and inverter and wiring it all up. But for me, um, I didn't have any experience with wiring when I did this. So even though it was a little bit more expensive to get the Goal Zero, for me, it was worth it because um, it was just really easy to install and it kind of helped me wrap my head around the whole project because I knew that if I spent a little bit of extra money on this, that that aspect of the build would be basically taken care of. And then I have a 100 watt panel up on the mm -hmm. roof that's hooked up to this and that powers my lights and my ceiling fan. And I don't have a refrigerator right now, but if I ever wanted to get one, I would just put it like right here and plug it in and it'd be really easy. So 
even though a lot of people don't like the system, I'm really happy with it. So I made this rope mat as a special touch for the van um, out of one of my retired climbing ropes. And I actually followed this video that I found online that was made by Edelred um, about how to make the mat. And it was actually really easy. It took me about two hours. All you have to do is you take a piece of plywood and you print out this pattern that shows you where to nail in a bunch of nails and then that just guides you on how to weave the mat. And I think it looks really nice and I'm really happy that I did it. Um, and I also have a few other special touches in the van. Uh, so we installed these like bolts here. So I have my rock rings, so I can clip that up there. And I have another one too, so that you can like do some training maybe on rest days or um, in between climbing or to warm up or whatever you want. <laughs> and then a few other special touches is my towel hooks over here are actually sky hooks from Black Diamond. And I got these because I visited my friend who works at the production facility and I noticed that all their coat hooks were these sky hooks and I thought it was really cool and she just gave me a bunch of them so I put it up in the van. So these drapes are basically just blackout curtains that I got for the van and um, you just pull them like this and it gives you some privacy. So this shelf just came with the van, we didn't do anything to it. Um, so I just have some extra stuff up here, like a toolbox, um, extra sheets, um, and I keep my ice climbing gear up here because I don't use it that much. So to have some privacy while I'm sleeping, I put these um, Reflectix panels up on the back windows, and all that I did was just cut it to the shape of the window, and then use double-sided tape to put some magnets on the back so you can just pull it off really easily, and then just stick it back on. Um, and then the other thing that I, we installed back here is this. And what this does is if I pull it, I can actually open the door from the inside. So if you're in bed and you want to see a nice view, you can just pull that little loop of rope and then open your back door and you can see like the beautiful desert or the sunrise. <laughs> so back here I have storage for all my climbing and camping gear. Uh, basically we just made the bed platform like we raised it up a little bit so that you have some space underneath here and I just have like two big bins and I have like my daisy chain with some climbing gear just so that it's easily accessible and that's just attached to like the frame of the bed platform with eye bolts and I have like a bin for shoes and I have a rope in here right now and chalk so basically like you can just open these doors and get whatever you need for a day of climbing. And we boxed out the wheel wells with plywood here so that you can have like a shelf to put something on top of. And also looks a little bit nicer. And then we also put like in the back a plywood divider so that nothing can slide to the front of the van. So it's all kind of separated from the living area of the van. These, what we did to install them was we drilled all the way through this frame piece of the van here and then put bolts and washers to basically keep this plate in. And then it has this ring where you can clip your carabiner to put up the rock ring. And uh, it wasn't too expensive, like maybe for all the hardware, I would say it was around $10 for both. It's pretty cheap. Um, and then for the insulation in the van, what we did was on the walls and the ceiling, it's all one inch foam board. And we just put that up um, basically with like double-sided tape and then to seal it in we used great stuff spray foam and just sprayed around the sides and filled in the cracks and all that and then for some of these like smaller spaces like kind of this thing behind the wall comes down it's just like a column basically so you use this stuff called rock wool um, which is it kind of looks like fiberglass, but it's much safer to handle. Like you don't have to wear a mask and you don't have to worry about it being exposed to the air or anything like that. And we just stuffed those smaller panels full of that and you can just rip it in your hands. It's really easy to work with. So down here, I just have my safety kit for the van. Basically, it's just a small fire extinguisher and uh, smoke and carbon monoxide alarm. So in the kitchen, I have this little magnet strip where I keep like knives, scissor, can openers, just some like utensils that I need for cooking. And then I also have these spice racks um, where I keep like salt, pepper, olive oil, uh, some utensils like forks and spoons, coffee, hot sauce, honey, spices, things like that. Um, and these are also relatively cheap, like maybe around $10 each and really easy to install. And they have this bar here so that you just 
can basically like take it out and put it in and, and I've never had anything fall out of that either, even on really pretty bumpy roads. I don't have a sink, but I would really like to get one in the future. Um, I didn't think that I needed it and you don't need it. And actually what I do for dishes now is I just have this wash bin and I have my dish gloves and brush <laughs> and sponge and I have a little bit of soap. So I can take like water from here, like just fill it up and then do your dishes uh, rinse them and then you find like a good place to dump the water like maybe somewhere by the side of the campsite or something like that and I use like biodegradable soap. So um, for showers and toilets most of the places that I end up climbing in have those facilities available. Um, if you're in like any national park in the US it's really easy to find a toilet. Um, also like if you're by a river or a lake like swimming definitely works and you can wash yourself off and I feel comfortable going like um, maybe like a week between showers, especially if you're swimming a lot and washing yourself. I My thought is that like you're not always in your house, right? Like you leave your house sometimes so you don't have that bathroom available to you. So when you go out, you find bathrooms, right? Like whether it's like a restaurant or uh, I don't know, a park or there are bathrooms around. So. It's, it's not that hard to find a bathroom. I started my road trip about a year ago. When I graduated from college, I knew that I really wanted to do like a, a longer road trip to go climb and like explore out west. Um, but I had student loans, so it didn't really make financial sense for me to do that at that time because I had to pay off my student loans. So, But with the goal in mind of doing a road trip, I worked for about a year and a half after college and I was able to pay off my student loans and save up enough money to be on the road for a while. So basically I've been on the road for almost a year. I think that like at some point I'll feel the desire to be more settled down and maybe be in one place for a while and have a job and obviously at some point like you have to make more money. so. That'll be a reality for me in the future. But like I could see myself like maybe working seasonally to support being on the road for at least part of the year for the next few years, but we'll see. Uh, I'm not really sure at this point. Um, if I were to do this van over again, I think that I would actually do a different van. I'd probably, they make a different version of this van that's about two feet longer in the cargo area and that just gives you a lot more options in terms of how to build it out. I would have initially done a sink for sure because I think that that really improves your quality of life to have a sink and maybe a heater because it would be really nice to wake up in the morning and have it just be warm in the van. If I were to give someone advice on what to do for a van I would say to the extent that your budget allows it I would make it as nice as you really can like you want to have all the little amenities that you would have like in a house basically because the more of those amenities like a sink or refrigerator um, that like a heater that you have like the happier you're gonna be in the van and the more you're gonna want to stay in it and then like if you decide to like work and stop your road trip for a while then you can just stay in the van because it's comfortable and I think that like to a certain extent, the money that you invest in the van, you'll get back later in terms of not having to pay rent. I think my friend and I both, in the end, really liked the process of building out the van, so we would love to turn it into a business um, where we build out vans for other people if they want to do it custom, and now that we have done it once, we feel like we know how to do it way better, so we could do like any kind of custom thing that people want, and um, our plan actually for this summer is like, we're gonna be on the road in um, other areas like Red Rocks, uh, Yosemite, Squamish, um, and like we want to show off the van and the work that we've done, and then see if we can find someone who wants us to build one out for them.